Today we have a really fun video about what catapult can launch a gummy bear the furthest. So we're going to build two different catapults, collect some data by launching gummy bears, and then analyze that data with some mathematical tools to figure out which catapult is better. Let's get started. All you need is popsicle sticks, rubber bands, a plastic spoon, gummy bears, and a measuring tape. First, you want to build two different catapults. You can do this by stacking some popsicle sticks and securing them with rubber bands, and then placing that stack between two more popsicle sticks and securing one end of the rubber band to make a catapult like this. For my second catapult, I'm using a spoon instead of the top popsicle stick. I'm going to be testing which catapult shoots further, the one made with the spoon or the one made with the popsicle stick. There are many other ways to make a catapult, so definitely get creative and build whatever you want. Just make sure that you have two different catapults so you can test which one launches a gummy bear further. Now that we have our two catapults, we need to test them. I'm going to launch 10 gummy bears per catapult and measure the distance each gummy bear traveled. Make sure you mark where you put the catapult with a piece of tape so you can test each catapult from the same starting place. Now, launch your gummy bears. After you've launched 10 gummy bears with your first catapult, take your measuring tape and measure from where you launched the gummy bear to where the gummy bear landed and write down that distance. Then repeat all of these steps with catapult 2. Okay, so now we have all of our data written down on a piece of paper, but it's really just a big list of numbers. Sometimes catapult one launch further, sometimes catapult two launch further. It's hard to tell which catapult was actually better overall. We need some way to organize and make sense of all of our data. Analyzing data is a type of math called statistics. Statistics is actually used all the time. Anytime people do an experiment and want to analyze the results like we're doing right now, or want to make predictions about the future, like with weather or politics, you're using statistics. So we're going to learn about a calculation called the mean or the average to help make sense of the data we just collected. You can do this all by hand, but a computer is a really helpful tool to do statistical analysis. All you need is access to a spreadsheet like with Excel or Google Sheets. If you can, log into a Google Drive account and click New. Then click Google Sheets, which will open up a blank spreadsheet. We are going to set up two columns, one for catapult one and the other for catapult two. Then make a place to record the distances you measured. Make sure to say what units your distances are measured in. I'm measuring everything in inches. Next, type in all of the data you collected and wrote down on your piece of paper. I'm adding some colors because I like the way it looks, but you can organize and decorate your spreadsheet however you want. Now that we have all of our data in our spreadsheet, we're ready to do our first statistical test. We're going to find the mean, or the average distance our catapults launched the gummy bears. The average is one way to measure the middle of our data, or how far the catapult is likely to shoot. It does not mean that the catapult will always launch a gummy bear this distance. Sometimes it'll be way shorter, and sometimes it'll be way farther. But on average, if we did this experiment many, many times, a lot of our gummy bears would end up at the distance we're about to calculate. Mathematically, the mean looks like this. That's pretty scary, and maybe you've never seen these symbols before, so let's break it down. The mean, or the average, is written like an X with a little bar over the top. A symbol that looks almost like a capital E is the Greek letter sigma, and it means add them all up. So add up every distance you measured, starting from i equals 1, or the very beginning, to i equals n, or 10 in our case, which means the last data point that we measured. The x sub i means each individual distance that you calculated, n represents how many data points we have, or 10 for us because we have 10 different distances we calculated. So basically all of this equation is telling you is to add up every distance you measured from the first one to the last one and then divide by the number of distances you have. This will give you the average or the mean which is represented by x with a bar over it. Now going back to the spreadsheet, you can type equals sum with the parentheses and then click and highlight all the values you want to add together and press enter. This will add them all for you. Once we have that number, we know from our equation that we need to divide by 10 to find the mean. So the mean distance that catapult 1 launches the gummy bear is 45.17 inches. Now, our computer can actually do this in just one step. So let's learn how that's done with the second catapult. Type equals average, parenthesis, and then highlight the numbers you want to find the average of, 
and then hit enter and you're done. It adds them up and divides by how many there are, just like we were doing the first time, but this time it does it all in one step. Just to double check, let's use the average function on catapult one, which we calculated in two steps. You see when I type equals average and highlight those numbers, we get the same answer that we found before. So now I know that the catapult I made out of a spoon shoots further on average than the catapult I made out of a popsicle stick because the mean distance launched is bigger. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you make your own catapults and use what we learned about mean and statistical analysis to figure out what catapult launches gummy bears the furthest. Bye!